Welcome to Cooperative Chats. This is our third episode. We are so excited, uh, especially um, for today's topic. Uh, so we're gonna go and get started. Um, the Cooperative Trust is the leading community for rising talent and credit unions. And this chat show is dedicated to all the emerging leaders and rising talent in the credit union space and all of their supporting organizations. Our plan is to meet every other Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Central, as we've been doing for the last few weeks, um, to bring you val valuable insights about leadership and things that you can really use to tactically build your leadership foundation. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, now for my introduction, my name is Courtney Angeli and I'm the Director of Community Development for Filene Research Institute and the Cooperative Trust. So what that means is I have the amazing honor and privilege of working with and leading young professionals uh, across North America in the credit union space to help them feel not only empowered but connected to the tools and resources that they need um, to really enhance their career journeys and cement their talent and their place in cooperative finance. So we've been doing these monthly themes, and this month our theme is community leadership. We're super excited about this. Um, so today the specific focus that we will be talking about is wellness. So how can we as community leaders help um, our teams, ourselves, our members feel and be well? And a trend that we're seeing in financial services and in most industries at the end of the day is that people are moving beyond crisis mode and they're really going into this recovery mode. However, leaders are facing this people challenge. Uh, folks are stressed, people are losing their jobs, they're not able to pay rent, um, loss of income across the board. So not only is this our credit union team members and their family members, but we're also experiencing the fact that our members are going through this too. And not only that, our team members are working with our members going through these really stressful times. So we do not have a better human to talk to us today about um, this topic. She is a very, very dear friend of mine. If you saw my LinkedIn post, we would talk for hours at our favorite restaurant here in Madison about how we would change the world through authentic leadership and human connection. So I'm super excited to introduce my very good friend, Julia Yates. So give me just a second and I'm going to bring her on in. All right. Julia, hello. Can You're you on. Me? I sure can. How are you? You can see me. <laughs> can you hear me? Um, so first, first, thanks for having me. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today talking about something that I'm really passionate about. And like Courtney said, we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, but we won't. We'll try to keep it to like 20 minutes. Um, so thank you for the introduction. My name is Julia Yates. Um, and I'm the Director of Behavioral Health for our Family Medicine Program here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, I'm also the director of our wellness and resiliency initiative that we call FAMWELL um, that serves our residents, our faculty, our staff, our entire department as sort of a resource hub that how do we take care of each other or how do we start thinking about wellness and resiliency. Um, so that's a little bit about me professionally. By trade, I'm a psychotherapist and I have been practicing in primary care for the last 12 years. Um, and then Courtney, you wanted me to say something personally, right? Yeah, so just tell me something that doesn't define you as a professional, but maybe just on a personal level. I think the reason why I put that there, because I, I love that question. I think that's <laughs> such an important question. One of the things that I teach um, when I'm teaching for our whole health initiative is what is your mission, aspiration, and purpose? We call that your map and having your map ground you and sort of all of the things that you do. Um, so my map, is something that I call connective exploration. Um, and you know what, I, to be frank, I do that professionally as well, but if you have had the chance to maybe sit in a restaurant with me, that's probably why the conversations go so long because I really enjoy getting to know you, exploring different things together, going on a journey together, maybe exploring a way you think, exploring a way I think, and coming to maybe a new realization. I think that's something that has defined me since I was little um, and probably why I even do the work that I do today. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that part of you. I appreciate that. Um, so because we have such a short period of time, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So I wanted to kick it off um, and just really focus on careers in service, right? So we have, you know, military, we have health, we have frontline first responders, which is um, what we're referring to as our uh, credit union and 
uh, financial services frontline staff. But I'm really curious if you could just share a little bit of the perspective right now of our health, of our healthcare workers and what's kind of going on um, in their world. You know, there our healthcare workers, our frontline workers. For you know, that is our primary care. That's our ER docs. That's our internal medicine folks. That's residents. That's nurses. That's respiratory techs. That's just that everyone that is continuing to be in our hospitals and clinics to serve folks, uh, there's lots going on for folks. I think one of the things that I've noticed is we know how to be in a crisis mode. You know, some of that, that's part of our training. You know, like we know how to show up, to take care of other people, to at times even selflessly put ourselves out there. I think what is harder for folks, myself included, I am a healthcare worker as well, is when we need to actually take a step back and care for ourselves. That is something that I don't think comes as naturally to many folks, not just people in healthcare, right? But that the actually being able to say, you know what, I need some help, or I'm struggling, or nope, mm -mm, I, I didn't nail it today. That's that's a transition and that's a paradigm shift that I feel like we have been working in the wellness world for a while. And what we're facing now is just bringing that even more to light is when I'm exhausted, do I recognize it? When I'm hurting, do I stop? When I need help, do I ask? Those are questions that don't come as easy for those of us that are natural helpers and healers. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. Um, what advice would you give to one of your doctors that was struggling with something like that? You know, that I've actually had the opportunity to do some of that. And I think what comes up for me is first that, wow, you know, if I'm having a conversation with you, I give you so much credit that you have taken enough time to honor this fact that maybe you need some help and that you're asking for help. One of the things we talk about a lot is this concept of resiliency. I actually tend to like that word better than wellness, right? So wellness is sometimes what I think about are the things that we do when we're already kind of in a good place and we'd like to stay in a good place, right? Like, did I sleep mm -hmm. today? Did I drink my water today? Am I getting a workout in? Resiliency though is sort of what we need, I think as a nation, as a community, as a global world yeah. right now. Resiliency is how do I keep going when I'm struggling? You know, right. How do I find just a little bit more in my tank? Or how do I acknowledge that, man, this is hard and I'm gonna persevere? Yeah. Resiliency is something I've been talking about with my residents, with my colleagues, with my peers. That's what we need. And positive psychology has been studying resiliency for a while. And we used to think that you sort of had it or you didn't, right? You right. were either resilient or you weren't. And actually, now we know that that's not the case, man. Resiliency is like piano. You got to practice it. And that that's actually such a breakthrough in that you can build resilient practices. You can take steps in your day to day, in your week to week, in your month to month to build up your resiliency storages so that when you are pretty low on your tank, yeah. that you can find a way to keep going. So that's really awesome. Um, we were, again, we were chatting about this offline and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to talk about resiliency. Um, and, you know, kind of shifting away from healthcare workers, I do see a lot of overlap. Um, granted, I, you know, thankful for healthcare workers, my goodness. Um, but what I love is that we're all going through something, but these steps of building resiliency is not just for our healthcare workers, right? Like these are things that our credit union staff can implement. These are things that our community banks can implement. So um, how would someone approach building up and strengthening their resiliency muscles? That is a great question. I'm so glad you asked Yay. that. Um, well, one of the things I like to talk about resiliency, and you know, so yes, you're gonna, this is where my true therapist is gonna come out. <laughs> How do we build an ability to be uncomfortable? Because, you know, we don't like it. <laughs> like As humans, we don't really like being uncomfortable. We don't like the uncomfortable feelings. We don't like the things that make us think. Or, you know, for us in healthcare, we don't like it when we have to pause. We are so much better at action and do and help and I'll be there for you and I'll take that shift and I will stand up. <laughs> but when we pause, sometimes that's pretty hard. Yeah that comfort sort of leaves us. So a resiliency practice that I often, you know, and quite frankly, practice for myself too, is can I find the ability to be uncomfortable and just be with that? So 
I'm going to give you kind of something concrete, if you don't mind. So sure. this is something that I call RAIN. It's an acronym. We all have our acronyms. In finance, I bet you have so many acronyms. Oh, I mean, credit unions you know, love acronyms. acronyms. <laughs> um, it's a human acronym. It doesn't matter what your background is, but it's a resiliency practice, and it's based on R-A-I-N. So the first part of this practice is sort of what I'm talking about there, taking a moment to recognize what you're feeling. So I, I, I won't put Courtney on the spot right now, but I could be like, Courtney, what are you feeling right now? But we, I want to do that for real. You can. I was going to say, I'm feeling nervous that this is our third episode and I want it to go smoothly. Right. So yeah. she's, you're picking up on, I'm feeling nervous. Yeah. Now, there's a whole wheel of emotions, right? There's so many emotions. So sometimes even staying with that recognition for a minute, what, what kind of nervous is, is it? Like if I was doing this for myself, since I might as well be vulnerable along with you, like I'm feeling a little bit anxious as well because camera work's not my thing and my camera's not on the computer, it's up there. So if you see <laughs> I look. So I would say I'm feeling a little out of my element, which is an uncomfortable feeling for me. Yes. Someone who likes to be in my element. So that's the first part, right? Recognize, rain. What really am I feeling? Name it, say it out loud, that's it. The next part of RAIN is acknowledge. So what acknowledgement is, is just letting it be there. All right, uncomfortability, there you are. I often envision myself kind of like waving to the emotion, like, well, hello, anxiety, there you are again. <laughs> see you. It's just yes. acknowledgement of the emotional experience, not trying to change the emotion. We've recognized the emotion. Now we're just going to acknowledge it caveat I'd love to say here, it just doesn't mean we have to like it, right? This doesn't mean we're accepting this feeling. It just means we're acknowledging it. It's here yeah. for the moment. I am feeling a little discombobulated because I am not a camera girl. I'm a live audience girl, and I'm just going to acknowledge that. Okay. So after we've recognized R, acknowledge A, then we investigate. That's your I in RAIN. Okay. Why is this feeling showing up for me right now? What, what's the reason? I, I will tell you. Okay, so if I'm investigating my own experience a little bit, I'm just, this was not planned. I'm just gonna be super vulnerable with you all today. Yeah. So I am investigating <laughs> this. Well, I like to do a good job. This means a lot to me. Like Courtney means a lot to me. This is probably why you're discombobulated because you care. Yep. I can, I can get with that. I don't have to like the experience, but investigating why it's showing up for me is helpful. And yeah. another question I always ask myself here is, why are you showing up for me, emotion? And what might you be trying to teach me? Ooh. What might I learn from you? So I'm probably learning right now that it's okay to be flawed. It's okay if people are like, where is she looking? What the heck? <laughs> I don't like, it's okay. Yes. So that's the investigation piece. And then your last part of RAIN, recognize, acknowledge, high emotion, investigate, unpack the emotion. Your last part of RAIN in this resiliency practice is the simple feeling that this feeling is not me. This is not my identity. So not me is the end part of RAIN. I am not my anxiety. I am not my perfectionism. I right. am not any of those things. I'm experiencing that right now. I may have to hold that for a bit, but this is not who I am. My yeah. emotions are separate than me, which means I can have different emotions. So yeah, this one's uncomfortable, but you know, when Courtney and I are done and we're like, hey, we got through it and that relieved feeling comes, we yes. need to hold that too. Yeah. So that was a long answer to say, RAIN is a resiliency practice. You can it's use. perfect. Um, and so because we're running short on time, I just wanna loop this back in. You know, as we practice this resiliency practice, how can we translate this to the people that we are serving? So you think about, you know, nurses helping people through COVID-19 or other conditions. You know, we're, we're also talking to members through job loss and not being able to pay rent. So is there a way to translate the RAIN model to the people that we are also serving? Yes. Oh, my gosh, that's such a great question, Courtney. And I've been thinking about some of our parallels on the work we do in the financial front line. So I actually want to take a moment to thank you guys as the financial front line, as we as healthcare are dealing with, you know, jet law, we're dealing with furloughs and people that are having reduced pay. And there's just a lot of financial unease. And so one of the biggest tips I would give for folks is let that be there. I think a lot of times, those of us in a helping world and 
you know, the folks in finance are in our helpers too. It's our desire to want to like fix or make it okay, or like maybe brush away that uncomfortable emotion. But I, my biggest tip for you is when you're having to deal with folks that are stressed and scared and uncomfortable, just let them be there for a moment. Like, yeah. gosh, yeah, this is really hard. Or wow, that has got to be incredibly scary. Yeah. And just that's a small part of rain, that like a little bit of recognition and acknowledgement that we can do with those that we are serving instead of trying to make them feel better or moving them right away. Right. Let them stay in that moment. Awesome. All right. Well, it is my chance to give you any final thoughts, um, anything that you would like to leave with our 10,000 strong community um, of young leaders and emerging professionals. I think I just that I'm it's been such an honor to be able to be here. And one of the things that I'm excited about is that some of these practices, right, that maybe have been more in the worlds of therapy or more in the worlds of healthcare are just sort of coming out everywhere, you know, that we don't need to separate out, you know, healthcare or financial wellness. That holistic wellness to be quote unquote well has many facets to it and financial wellness and spiritual wellness and moving your body and all of this starts to go together. And that's super exciting. Like I'm yeah. so excited to be here talking about something that I'm passionate about, but absolutely fits in the world of financial health. Awesome. So I don't know if well, you have any questions for me, Courtney, but that's all I got. For oh you. gosh. I mean, I feel like I asked you all of the questions that I, that I had. Um, if anyone is watching now and has any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. I'll make sure that Julia can see them. Um, not to put any pressure on you, but I'm sure she would be more than happy to answer any questions that have come up through this discussion. Um, but Julia, thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. Um, and again, thank you so much. And I hope that we can bring you back again. I'd love to. And thanks for having me, Courtney. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so this is about to conclude our show. Before we end, I'm just gonna leave you with a very, very simple call to action, and that is use RAIN today. Uh, and if you can't use RAIN today, use it at least one time this week. So we are going to recognize how we're feeling. We're gonna acknowledge it, wave hello to whatever it is. We're going to investigate why we are feeling that way. And then from there, we're gonna recognize that that emotion is not us. Um, so that is going to be my one call to action for you today. Um, give that a go. Uh, and then I will also like to share with you that we will be back again on June 3rd with our next episode, 1.30 p.m. Central. We are live with Savvy Money's Chris Franza, and we cannot wait, and we hope to see you all there. Thanks so much, and we hope you guys have a 